The FAA is in big trouble. In a public display of unity, several space companies with the help of a senator have backed the FAA into a corner after being frustrated with the constant delays in Starship's second test flight. Let's take a look at this congressional hearing and how it will affect the regulatory process going forward. During a recent one, five-hour hearing, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz emphasized the importance of timely SpaceX Starship launches. He exerted pressure on regulatory bodies, including the FAA and Fish and Wildlife Services, to expedite the process. Senator Cruz, in his opening statement, expressed pride in Texas's significant role in American space leadership. He highlighted NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston and praised companies like SpaceX, which he personally visited in August. This favorable momentum bodes well for another Starship orbital attempt this year. Senator Cruz highlighted that Texas plays a crucial role in the journey to space exploration's final frontier. He acknowledged a common criticism of the commercial space industry, which is seen by some as primarily benefiting the ultra-wealthy due to SpaceX being led by Elon Musk and Blue Origin being founded by Jeff Bezos. Senator Cruz strongly opposed the need for a redundant review process before Starship's second launch. He questioned the FAA's requirement for a duplicative environmental review to ensure corrective actions have been taken. During the hearing, Senator Cruz inquired about the timeline for the Human Landing System, HLS version of Starship. SpaceX's Vice President for Build and Reliability, William Gerstenmaier, found it challenging to provide a definite timeline. Gerstenmaier emphasized that the responsibility should lie with private companies like SpaceX to drive development at the fastest pace possible rather than being overly regulated. He expressed frustration that despite their readiness to launch the next Starship test flight for a month, the bureaucratic processes, including licensing and environmental approvals, often take longer than the rocket's development itself. He stressed that such unnecessary bureaucracy is unrelated to public safety and should be minimized to avoid hindering progress in space exploration. SpaceX has consistently maintained that rocket explosions in the early stages of development serve as valuable learning experiences as they prompt rapid design improvements rather than just ground testing. However, William Gerstenmaier acknowledged that, in addition to regulatory challenges, SpaceX faces technical hurdles in the development of Starship. It remains uncertain if SpaceX can meet NASA's target of having Starship ready for a lunar landing by late 2025. Gerstenmaier emphasized that they have many challenges ahead to meet NASA's requirements, and the only way to overcome them is through continuous test flights. Furthermore, Gerstenmaier mentioned that SpaceX has struggled to allocate resources due to the uncertainty surrounding the issuance of a launch license. Despite working extra shifts and getting the vehicle prepared, they couldn't proceed with flights. As they await the license, SpaceX may conduct additional ground tests, including a wet dress rehearsal. Still, the lack of regulatory certainty hampers their ability to establish a more efficient schedule. In response to these concerns, the FAA stated that they are diligently working on attracting, hiring, and retaining more staff. Deputy NASA Administrator Pam Melroy emphasized the importance of proper funding for federal agencies responsible for launch regulation. She highlighted that, as global interest and capabilities in space exploration expand rapidly, America must continue to lead in human exploration, with plans for returning to the moon under Artemis and embarking on the first human mission to Mars to search for life deeper within our solar system. She added that to achieve NASA's objectives successfully, it is crucial that our regulatory partners are adequately equipped with the necessary resources to effectively oversee and keep up with the rapid advancements in the commercial space industry. During the hearing, in addition to SpaceX representatives, there were also delegates from two other commercial space enterprises, namely Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. These companies focus on offering space tourism experiences to affluent individuals, taking them to the fringes of space on suborbital rockets. It was remarkable to witness a shared sense of unity among these industry leaders on a day marked by significant divisions elsewhere on Capitol Hill. All the witnesses and subcommittee members who spoke on Wednesday were in unanimous agreement that the current regulatory framework governing commercial space companies requires substantial modifications. They expressed concerns about regulatory practices that could potentially impede the progress and innovation within the industry, highlighting the need for a more adaptive approach to regulation. Karen Schenewerk, president of CS Consulting and a former employee of both SpaceX and Relativity Space, informed the subcommittee that existing FAA regulations indeed safeguard crew members as part of the vehicle's flight safety team, and passengers are protected through their training and acceptance of risks. Given the limited number of private human space flights, including three orbital and ten suborbital ones, and considering the ongoing dialogue between the FAA and the industry, as well as the challenges the FAA faces in implementing existing regulations, the initial premise supporting the learning period still holds merit. Despite the hearing's focus on FAA regulations, the FAA was not invited to participate in the discussion. According to an FAA spokesperson, they did not receive an invitation to testify. During the hearing, Phil Joyce, senior vice president of the New Shepard Business Unit at Blue Origin, 
offered three suggestions to modify FAA regulations in the commercial space sector. Firstly, he proposed creating a more streamlined process to keep pace with the industry's rapid developments. Secondly, he recommended that Congress provide sufficient resources to the FAA to cope with licensing demands. Lastly, he suggested granting the FAA more time to make necessary adjustments by extending the learning period. Beyond the FAA, Congress should consider a comprehensive approach to establish a mission authorization framework. This framework should be well-defined, with clear boundaries between agencies. It is also advisable for Congress to designate a single agency as the central hub for authorizing commercial space activities. Sirisha Bandler, Vice President of Government Affairs and Research at Virgin Galactic, suggested an extension of at least eight years for the learning period. She emphasized that this extension is essential because it allows for informed discussions based on available data and operational experiences. Bandler stressed the importance of developing a safety framework for spaceflight during this extended period. This framework should outline regulated areas and their consequences, ensuring a delicate balance between regulation and innovation. Importantly, Bandler emphasized the need for adequate funding and expertise to be allocated to the FAA to effectively implement and manage this framework. The focus should be on creating a blueprint for spaceflight safety, ensuring that the learning period does not pass without a well-thought-out plan in place. Senator Eric Schmidt, the top Republican on the subcommittee from Missouri, and Chair Kirsten Sinema, an independent from Arizona, were in agreement that the moratorium should be extended. They both recognized the need for improvements in existing regulations, especially those outlining the process for obtaining human spaceflight launch licenses and satellite licenses. Ultimately, their hope was for the FAA to permit Starship another opportunity for an orbital test flight later this year. Starship, designed to carry over 150 tons into orbit and intended for landings on celestial bodies like the Moon and Mars, holds significant importance for NASA's Artemis program. NASA plans to utilize this spacecraft to transport astronauts to the lunar surface as part of the ambitious Artemis initiative. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has ambitious plans for Starship, aiming to dominate the heavy launch market and eventually colonize Mars. Starship, along with its booster, has garnered attention from a diverse range of customers, from space tourists to the Defense Department. The military is interested in utilizing this rocket to transport cargo rapidly anywhere on Earth, completing journeys in just half an hour. In the context of NASA's Artemis program, SpaceX is receiving over $4 billion for its involvement. In this initiative, astronauts travel in an Orion capsule launched on NASA's Space Launch System rocket, later transferring to a waiting Starship lander for transportation to and from the Moon's surface. Starship promises to significantly reduce costs, estimated at around $40 million per launch, compared to the hefty $2 billion price tag associated with the SLS. The fundamental difference lies in the design approach. NASA traditionally constructs space vehicles with a focus on achieving perfection, rigorously testing to prove their reliability. In contrast, SpaceX adopts a more iterative approach, building multiple prototypes and pushing them to their limits, sometimes even beyond, to achieve rapid innovation and cost efficiency. It remains to be seen if SpaceX's unique approach will prove successful for the Starship. What do you think? Will this display of unity force the FAA to accelerate its pace? Uh, please share your thoughts in the comments below.